Welcome to the NCLEX Bootcamp series on the next generation NCLEX. I'm Dr. Emily Giddings, one of the co-creators of NCLEX Bootcamp, and in this series, we're going to give you everything you need in order to prepare for the next generation NCLEX, starting with testing basics. We're going to look at what the next generation NCLEX is, we'll describe how computerized adaptive testing works, and we'll also show you how the pass-fail rules work to determine the test length. So first, what is the next generation NCLEX? Well, the NCSBN, or the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, creates the NCLEX. And the NCSBN found that even though nurses were passing the NCLEX, they were going on to make clinical judgment errors in practice that risked harming clients. So they saw this need to update the exam in a way that it better measures clinical judgment, or that thought process that goes into the clinical decisions you will be making as a nurse. So beginning in April 2023, NCLEX becomes the next generation NCLEX, which they say asks better questions in order to better measure clinical judgment. And they achieve this by incorporating case studies. So in addition to the conventional select all that apply and multiple choice style questions that you're familiar with, you're now also going to see case studies on the next gen NCLEX. And just like in actual practice, you are going to have a whole client chart to help you answer the questions within each case. In that chart, you can review your client's lab results, their vital signs, their physical exam findings, and more. Every case on the NextGen NCLEX is structured according to this clinical judgment measurement model, which is the thought process that goes into clinical decision making. So the first step in any client encounter is to recognize cues to determine what matters most. Because any client encounter that you have, they're going to have several things going on. They're going to have symptoms they're reporting to you, physical exam findings that you're noting. And so the first question of the six questions in any next-gen case asks you to decide what's most important. The second question in a next-gen case asks you now what could this mean? So take shortness of breath. For example, if one client comes in and has shortness of breath but also has a fever and is coughing up yellow-green sputum, that's a different set of cues with a different meaning than if a client came in with shortness of breath, but they had a history of heart failure and they also had ankle edema. So the second step is determining what could these cues mean? What disease processes could these findings indicate? Then third, you prioritize hypotheses or determine what is the priority problem that I need to address first. Then fourth, you generate solutions. What can I do to solve this problem? Of course, in the example of the client with pneumonia, they're going to benefit from antibiotics, whereas the client with heart failure won't and will require diuretics, right? So determining what you can do. And then in the fifth question, taking that action. So safely giving that diuretic or safely giving that antibiotic. And then finally, in the sixth question, evaluating outcomes or determining, did it help? So then how does computerized adaptive testing play into this? Well, the NCLEX is actually really interesting in that it's a variable length exam. Unlike most standardized tests where you have to answer hundreds and hundreds of questions in order to pass, the NCLEX can be as short as 85 questions or as many as 150 questions. And it all depends on this computerized adaptive testing algorithm or CAT. And how CAT works is that every single question on the NCLEX is assigned an ability level or a difficulty level. And right now, the passing standard ability level is set here at zero on a scale where a higher number indicates a higher ability level and a lower number indicates a lower ability level. So everyone who first opens their NCLEX, everyone's first question is going to be at around this zero ability level, this passing standard level. Then after every answer that you give, the computer estimates your ability and then selects the next item based on what it thinks you have a 50% chance of answering correctly. So let's say in this example, I answer the first question correctly. Now it's going to give me a higher ability level question because it estimates that I might have a higher ability level, but maybe it was a fluke and I get the next one wrong. So it gives me an easier question at a lower ability level. At first, the computer is very uncertain about this estimate. I've only answered one or two questions, so this uncertainty bar here is really broad. They can't say with certainty yet that I'm above or below that passing standard. But then every time you answer, the computer's estimate becomes more precise. So it goes on like this for the duration of the exam, answering incorrectly, correctly, incorrectly again and again. And remember, it's okay to miss questions on the NCLEX. 
Unlike other exams, the goal on the NCLEX is not to answer a set percent of questions correctly, but it's rather just to demonstrate that your ability level is above this zero passing standard level. So you continue answering questions until you've answered at least 85 questions and the computer's estimate becomes precise enough that they can say with a 95% certainty that you are either above or below this passing standard, and then the exam ends. And that can occur in 85 questions, it can occur in up to 150 questions, but that is the basics of how computerized adaptive testing works to structure your exam. Now let's look at the pass-fail rules. In the example we just walked through, that candidate passed under the 95% confidence interval rule. But what happens if by the end of your exam you haven't achieved that 95% confidence interval? Let's say, for example, this is the passing standard, and you go through your exam answering questions correctly, incorrectly, and so on. But by the end of the test, maybe your confidence interval is not yet 95%, and that it still straddles this passing line. So you reach the maximum length of exam, 150 questions, the exam ends, and then your pass-fail decision is made based on whether you are above or below the passing standard at the end of the exam. Similarly, there's a run out of time rule. If you've answered at least 85 questions, which is the minimum length exam, and you run out of time either before you reach the 95% confidence interval or before you reach the maximum 150 questions, then similar to the maximum length exam, your pass-fail decision is made based on whether you are above or below the passing level at that final question. Now let's look at the test length and duration. So we've already discussed how computerized adaptive testing works to determine whether you need a minimum or maximum length or something in between in order to demonstrate your ability. But your test might actually begin to look a little bit different and incorporate new item types if you require longer than a minimum length exam. And I'll show you what I mean. So every candidate, no matter how long your exam is, answers 15 unscored test items. These aren't scored. They're being tested for use in future exams for other candidates, and they aren't labeled in any way as being test items. They just appear randomly within your first 85 questions. Also in your first 85 questions, every candidate answers three next-gen cases for a total of 18 items. Then everyone answers at least 52 standalone items. These are your more familiar NCLEX-style questions that aren't associated with a case study. Then beyond that, if you should require longer than a minimum length exam, up to 117 standalone items, then 10% of that remainder are made up of a specialty type of item called a clinical judgment item. And this type of item, they've essentially taken that six step process and compressed it into one item. So we'll look at that item type in more detail in a later lesson, but for now, just understand that your test is going to look a little bit different if you require longer than the minimum length. And that doesn't mean you've passed or failed. That's by design so that you don't have to answer hundreds and hundreds of questions to demonstrate your ability. So just to recap of the test breakdown, every candidate, no matter how long their exam is, answers 15 unscored test items, three next-gen cases, and then between 52 and 117 standalone items, where if you have to answer more than 52, then 10% of the remainder are specialty clinical judgment items. Now, of note, don't let it confuse you if you get four next-gen cases on your NCLEX. Within these 15 unscored test items, you might see one next-gen case. So if you do answer four next-gen cases on your NCLEX, just know that one of them was an unscored test case. The total duration of the exam is five hours, including a tutorial at the beginning and two optional breaks. So that comes out to roughly one to two minutes per question, and we do recommend that you use the timer function during your practice so that you can get that one to two minute per question pace down. Here are some additional next-gen references if you'd like to review those. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for your time, and then next up we will cover the NCLEX test plan.